that's the magic words. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining me this morning, Bethany. Happy so, to be here. I are, are you the membership chair for your school? I am. Yes. What school are you with? So I am with um, Carl Sundell Elementary. Oh, okay. Folsom Cordova. Uh huh. I know yeah. where it's at. Okay. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into the um, PowerPoint. And okay. if you have any questions along the way, just feel free to stop me because it's just you and I. Thank you. All right. So this is adapted from a uh, California State PTA workshop. So we are going to go over explaining why membership is so important, what your role as the membership chair is, how you can set goals and how to access tools and resources to help you succeed. And let's see. And share. Oh, good grief. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Nope, that's not what I want. Resume share, that's what I want. There we go. And now, nope, nope, that's not what I wanted to do either. I'm not good at arranging other screens while I'm trying to do this. It's like some people can go, like Tom and Cheryl can go and post links. It's like, I have no clue how you do that because every time I try and do that, I lose the Zoom. It does get a little tricky. I, I think for me, the way I learned was um, ha having, you have to have multiple devices and you- Oh, well, I don't. And, <laughs> and, if you don't and, that, and that's the thing, it's like, it, sometimes you're just limited by what you have so there you go no worries you're it's i can see your screen i see the course learning objectives and okay let's yeah and i can hear go. you great so let's see what else um and okay Okay, why is membership important? Well, membership is important because PTA is a membership funded nonprofit organization. Without our members, there isn't any PTA. So um, we need members to help fund the things we want to do. We need members to agree to what we want to do and to give their input on what they want us to do. And membership is also part of our advocacy program. The most important part of, you can see how they're both equal, membership plus advocacy equals success. Well, PTA began as an advocacy organization back in 1897. Two ladies got together and said, we don't want any more of child labor. We want, we want some change. And they had 2000 people show up on the Washington Mall in DC. And thus PTA was born. So advocacy means that we advocate for all children. And the way they do that is there is a legislative arm to PTA who takes stances on things that might be affecting education or children, um, that kind of thing. Um, in California, a couple of years ago, they they helped change the when kids go to school kids go to school later now that was part of uh something that pta had action on oh i didn't realize that okay yeah so you can thank them <laughs> yeah hey wait a minute what do you mean i don't get to go to work yet i have to take the kids later yes 
that's that's the way it is. Uh, they they found a legislator that, who kind of agreed with that, and they did a lot of studies. Um, and uh, teenagers start later than most people. Very so true. They, they do. Yeah. I I just never. Uh, okay, you have got this kid doing homework, and suddenly. He hasn't gone to bed until midnight or one o'clock and you want him to be out of bed and at school by 730. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a little rough. It is a little rough. Mm -hmm. So the responsibilities of the membership chairman, you're going to set membership goals. You're going to create and implement a membership plan. You're going to promote membership throughout the year. Membership doesn't end in September or October. Uh, it is a year long activity. You help your membership, you set a membership budget, you collect the dues and verify that the per capita is remitted. Per capita is that portion of your dues that does not belong to your unit. Each unit has to remit $5 of per capita to third district to send it on to national and state. You create a That's membership a member. So like when a, when a family buys a member. membership for two. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's $10. It's $10. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So it, we don't encourage family memberships simply because first of all, you have to establish what a family is. So if you have a family membership and you say your family is four people and you only charge $20, say you charge $15 for that, mem that, for that whole family, you are losing $5 <laughs> per capita because you have to, you have to forward 20 bucks worth of cap per capita. Got it. Yep. See what I mean? Yep. Okay. And then you distribute membership cards. And so goal setting. So you have to determine where you are. For instance, do you by any chance know what your membership was last year? Uh, not offhand, but I do know that it was a lot lower because just with COVID and still yes. things still being a little weird. We we, yeah. we tried, but um, this year we're really um, really pushing membership and and, ha and having some incentives tied to membership. Uh huh. So, and, and that's been very helpful. We've made it very visual um, with some like thermometers showing. Oh yeah, those are always fun. Yeah, a membership by the different grade levels and we have a little competition going. So the grade level with the highest percent percentage of memberships is gonna win a pizza party. Yeah. So just different strategies to try to get parents involved. And also we do a starstruck, like a dance performance. Yeah. And um, so, all members who have, everyone who's become a member by October 14th, we're gonna draw names and they get front row seats to the Starstruck dance performance. Oh, nice. So, yeah, just little perks, you know, and it, it's funny how those little things do motivate yeah. people. They do, yeah, they do. So yeah. um, I have a, a, a membership list that I just looked up while you were talking. Mm -hmm. So in 2020, 2021, you had 23 members. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> that is, because you've been really good before. The year before that, it was 97. Mm -hmm. The year before that was 142. And in 2016, 17, it was 197. Yeah, I want to say we're at like 180 or so right now. So oh, that's good. That's yeah, so we made good. A, yeah, big improvement. So Okay, excellent. Yeah. So you need to discover where you are where you want to go, and then what strategies will get you there. So where are you? Your past membership numbers, I just kind of gave, mm -hmm. gave you a, a snapshot of that. Keep track of your members. That's part of your job. You have a membership list mm -hmm. because you keep that membership list because you wanna know who your members are so you can contact them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you also need to know when they joined because for certain things, you have to have been a member for 30 days before you can vote, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you want to go? So you set the goals for the month. 
set target goals? Do you want to increase how many teachers you've got? Do you want to add students? Students can join at any level. Um, when I was at a unit, my kids were members. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they didn't know, they didn't care. Right, right. Um, uh, grandma on the East Coast can join. Uncle Fred from Florida can join. Your neighbors can join if they don't have any kids anymore. It, anybody can join as long as they, uh, you know, adhere, they, they want to help your school and help PTA. I'm glad you brought that up. I hadn't thought about like, because our neighborhood is, in, is within walking distance to the school. Yeah. So I could even put on our um, promote, like support, call Sundal through the PTA to all the neighbors. Yeah, you and, could. And it's really just a way for them to support all the programs. Yes, it is. You yeah. don't have to have a child there. Most of their, maybe a lot of their children did go there in mm -hmm. the past and they might still have a fond place in their heart for it. Yes. So you're going yeah. to create and implement a membership plan. Sounds like you already kind of started with the, the thermometer gauge. Mm -hmm. Is it like in the cafeteria? It's or actually outside so that all the parents, as they drop their kids off, can see they it. Can see it. Nice. That's yeah. very and then nice. The I, I update the principal each week so that when he sends out his Sunday email, uh -huh. it includes the, the, the uh, percentages so that they okay. can see where their you know, kids' grades are. Right. Yeah. Now, did you say you're doing parties per grade level? Yeah. So then the grade, so the grade with the highest percentage of memberships, uh -huh. is they get a pizza party. There you go. Yep. Yeah. That'll so do like, it. Yeah. Motivate, like get the kids to go home and say, hey, mom, are you a member of the PTA? We get a pizza party. Right? Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So. How much are your dues? What so, do you charge? It's um 15 for membership for one and I think 30 for membership for two. Uh-huh. Okay. And I think, yeah, there was, I guess, so the PTA president was saying that, I guess there was some, I don't know if you were part of those conversations, something about like, maybe we shouldn't have increased them or I, I don't, I don't really know. There was something that happened. Okay. So your membership dues are set in your bylaws. Yeah. Um, whatever your bylaws say, that's what you have to so do whatever, whatever the, the bylaw, whatever the whatever the we vote they are they can be nope no no it, 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 it's a, it has to be in your bylaws so if you say well you know we need to increase our membership to 20 bucks per person and it's only 10 in your bylaws you have to change your bylaws okay to reflect that but okay. the bylaws are we vote on those right yes you do vote on those Okay. Do those need approval by? Yes, they do. By, you, okay. um, there's the a, this is the part I don't understand that well. So okay. Yeah. So you you got bylaws. What are your, it's kind of your GPS how you run your PTA. Right. Each year you should look at them and see, and every five years you update them to the most recent template. Now, okay. if you think you need to make changes, like you want to increase your dues, you um, there's a process you do it. You can do e-bylaws um, where you do it online, and mm -hmm. then you submit those to our third district parliamentarian. She will look at them and say, okay, you did everything right. And she will send them on to state parliamentarian. Okay. And if she, if she didn't do, if you didn't do everything right, she'll go back and say, hey, you need to think about this. But Sue's, Sue Dean is wonderful at it. So they go up to the state parliamentarian, he signs them, they come back. Sue says, oh good, they got them back and she'll send them back to you. And at that point, you have an association meeting to vote on adopting them. Gotcha. And then they are your legal bylaws. Got it, okay, thank okay. you. All right, so wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just go with flow. <laughs> it skipped your, your other lines, huh? Yes. <laughs> so there are lots of reasons why people don't join PTA. And PT CAPTA 
California State PTA did a survey a couple of years ago, and these are what people said. They have a lack of time. They uh, don't have enough time because they're working. They don't know how they can support the school. Um, the, they think, a lot of people think, okay, I did my job, I sent my child to school, it's your problem. Mm. I always thought, I'm sorry, I'm an A-type personality. So when I sent my daughter off to kindergarten, I went, I wanna know who, what, when, where, why, and how. Mm -hmm. And so I volunteered in her classroom and, and they send all of that paperwork at home, the emergency card and all that stuff at the beginning of the school year. They sent a membership envelope. So I just filled it out and sent it back because I thought that's what you do. And so um, my immigrant parents, a lot of times don't know anything about the PTA and they have sometimes the mindset, the cultural mindset that they send the child to school and that's it. They don't interfere right. with the school. Yep. Yeah, I'm actually a, a former ESL teacher with uh, oh, Sex yeah. Unified, so uh -huh. I work teaching adults. So I'm, yes. yeah, I definitely understand. They, they just don't, they don't understand like how important parental involvement is in their yes. child's success. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. So perceptions of PTA, a uh, parent's image and perceived value of PTA is, is completely based on the people, which is the, your executive board is the face of your PTA the programs that you can give your school and the tangible benefits that they see at their school. Did my kid get to go on a field trip? Did my kid get to see an assembly? Did my kid get to have a, a be a part of the jogathon? Did my kid get to go to the book fair? A lot of things like that. And so the local leaders are your PTA leaders. So your unit decides what your unit is going to do. And the awareness that anything beyond the unit exists is extremely limited. Um, I don't want to be a part of national PTA. Well, you are anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to make your PTA seem relevant to the people. Why parents don't join? They don't want to be forced to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to attend meetings. And they don't want to be asked to take on a task. Now, that makes it really hard because we are a volunteer organization. But it is perfectly all right for people to join your PTA and that is enough. They are yep. showing their support of their students' education by joining your PTA. Whether they get any further involved, it's kind of up to them and up to you. You have to kind of make it enticing. If mm -hmm. you're going to have a harvest carnival, oh, well, we need volunteers to help at the harvest carnival. If we don't get volunteers, we won't have the harvest carnival type thing, OK? Um, we, we just did that. Okay, so by joining PTA, your dues don't obligate you to volunteer. Don't, doesn't say you have to be the PTA president. Yes, we definitely <laughs> recognize that that's, that's a very important message to convey. Oh, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if I join the PTA, does that mean yep. you're going to be bugging me all the time? Exactly. We hear that all the yeah, you know, that's that's what we've heard in the past. So we make sure that that's very clear in yeah. our communication. Yeah. Um sometimes at the beginning of school, when you're um asking for P P people to join your PTA, you can like send a flyer home saying, these these are our officers, this is what we have done in the past, mm -hmm. this is what we want to do this year. We would love you to join us by being a member. Being a member does not obligate you in any other way. You're just showing your support 
of your child's education, which right. is really important. And it's important to your child too. But then at the bottom part, you can say, we would need help with the harvest carnival. We need help with the ice cream social. We need help with the spaghetti. Dip. What would you be willing to help with? Mm -hmm. And then go from there. Yeah. That's yeah. One, one, one way to do it. Yeah, that's good. So what you can tell them is by joining PTA, your dues are supporting the school and the students. We'd love to see you at a meeting because it's an association. I mean, it's a parent teacher association. We need parents to participate. We need 11 people to show up at an association meeting so we can vote on stuff, but you don't have to attend. Now COVID helped in that we were doing Zoom meetings as well. A lot more people could join via Zoom. They had that's, the only that's the only way I was able to get involved. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And they don't want to be asked to take on a task. You, you, you don't have to do that. If, if they're paying their $10, their $10 is supporting the programs that you are going to bring to your school. Yeah. So you have to make that really clear. So to market and promote your the value of your PTA. So the more members we have, the more voices we add to our PTA advocacy part because um, California State PTA has a legislative committee mm -hmm. and they meet once a month, once a month, once a month, once every two months and talk about what kind of bills are coming up that they want to take action on or whether they want to stop it. And they can go to the legislatures, legislators and mm -hmm. say, hey, we have 900,000 members and we would like to see this. So understand what PTA has accomplished and continues to champion, like the changing the times the kids go to school. Mm -hmm. Now PTA started kindergartens. Oh wow. They started the school lunch program they had a hand in um, child labor laws hmm. and they had a hand in establishing the juvenile justice system. That, that's wow. just some of the things that they did. So yeah, I didn't realize it's 125 year old history and they have powerful women. Um, you speak together with one voice and you will be heard. Yeah. So you're going to have to try and address the reasons people don't join. Most of the, um, most people will join because you ask them. If you don't ask them, they won't. Uh, if you give them a personal ask, it's harder to say no to your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you want everybody to join. You want to, those English second language parents to join. You want the special ed people to join. You want um, to consider how can we get more men in. Um, you want to avoid click-like behavior. A lot of people say, I'm not going to join the PTA because you are a click. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the best way you can combat that is by telling people what your PTA has done in the past. And if you are back to having in-person meetings, have people greet people at the door, say, hi, we're glad you came. I'm so-and-so. And, -so. and don't, don't act like a click. Try and include more people. Talk to more people. Don't all sit together if you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So you, you just have to reach out. Okay. Oh, we already did that one. Okay, we did that one. Did that. Didn't we do that? We did that. Looks like you're going backwards. I think I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I want you to, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Okay, we did. That's where we were. All right, so a successful membership plan. So you start early and you want to outreach to people in as many ways as possible. If you have a Facebook page, use your Facebook page. If you have um, access to uh, open house and your PTA president gets a, you know, three minutes to speak, have her say, join PTA and, and have a membership table there so people can join. Um, utilize the one-on-one -on -one outreach. Uh, if anybody on your board is bilingual, use them. If you have any, it, does Carl Sundahl have a great um, Spanish speaking or other languages? Not really. Okay. No. Then you don't need to kind of reach out and try and find somebody to translate. So you can reach out to past PTA members. You can reach out to, this is more other school groups, boosters, mm -hmm. that's more for middle school and high school. So track and report your membership progress. That's what you're doing with the thermometer. Target mm -hmm. those who have not signed up yet. So what happens, I think, at the beginning of the school year is a lot of people don't have money for mom and dad to join at the same time because it, you know they had to buy school clothes or whatever. So you can reach out in January and have another membership drive where they might join with, uh, you know, might have another chance to join. Have a membership table at every event you have at school. Have you joined PTA yet? Come on, it's only $10, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, and you're doing the specific classrooms. So you're doing that. That's great. Organize events and contests. That's perfect because people love contests. One of the most important things you can do is have or develop an elevator speech. What you would tell a person to get them to join your PTA, say, for instance, while you're stuck in an elevator or while you have them for that two minutes, that, two, that three minutes, you want to say what, you know, I joined Mission Avenue PTA because it helps the school and it helps all children. It allows me to be involved in my child's education. It keeps me informed about what's going on at the school. And without our PTA, we would not have art. We wouldn't have field trips. We wouldn't have our yearly carnival. We wouldn't have, you know, you, and mm -hmm. you just add to it. So you have to think about that. And everybody on your board should sort of, it, it's not just your job as membership chair, everybody should have an elevator speech. Like I told you, I joined PTA when my daughter went to kindergarten because mm -hmm. they sent an envelope home. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what you're supposed to do. So you promote membership throughout the year. It's not just an August, September thing. Um, you are encouraged to have a, a kind of a secondary membership drive in like January. You can, when you go back to school, you say, hey, it's the beginning of a new year. Um, if you didn't have a chance to join PTA already, here's your chance um, at my school membership um, on the first day back of school after the break, we would meet them with a coffee cup at the drop-off lane. We would meet them with coffee, a coffee cup with a little join PTA sticker on the top. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to promote it throughout the year. The membership year runs from July 1. <sighs> They say through June 30th. That's not really true. Your membership is good through October 31st because. Oh, I didn't oh, realize that. Yeah. It used to be on the back of the membership cards. I don't know that it is anymore. But the reason is you are going to have to pass your budget and your 
audit and your calendar for the year, and you may not have any members yet, or they may not have been members for 30 days yet. So it goes through the end of October. Gotcha. It's your covered, okay? This is a couple of, here's a mem an example of a membership table. Yours doesn't have to be that fancy. It can just be a card table with membership envelopes and a cash box or whatever. Um, this one I, I thought was kind of cute. What's popping with PTA? That is cute. Yes. <laughs> is cute. I'm not that clever. No, nor am I. <laughs> yeah. Hence the thermometer is always a good one. I always thought having um, a tree and having leaves on the tree, that would be good. Or, yeah, a, dal yeah. or a dalmatian and then the spots. Are just yeah, that's <laughs> another good idea. Yeah. So who can join PTA? Anybody can join. They just got to pay their dues. Every member of the community can be thought of as a potential PTA member. Uh, you can do local businesses. You can do your um, city councilman. You can do the mayor or, you know. Hmm. Set your membership budget. Um, did they give you a budget? Mm -mm. Okay, so your budget is also is going to include that pizza party mm -hmm. or, or whatever prizes. Mm -hmm. So you should you should see what your budget is. Okay. And then increase it at a, a board meeting if it's not enough. Okay. Okay. So then you collect you know, collect dues and remit per capita. You collect the dues if are you on totem or not? No, I was looking at that. No, we're using membership toolkit. Okay, we, we will we will talk about totem. Okay. So you collect the dues if you're getting cash or you're getting checks and you're using envelopes and you have to count all that. And you, then you remit per capita. We talked about per capita. That's the amount of dues that has to go forward. And when is that due? It is due each month. Each month, okay. Each month. Another reason to use Totem. <laughs> I'll get back to it. So, um, so third district office sells membership envelopes like this. They're $15, I think, for 500 envelopes. And you can just kind of blanket the whole school with them. Mm. Do you use something similar or something? We have, um, we just have, I created a, a paper registration form because some people uh -huh. do prefer that. Yeah. So I have the paper registration form um, and then I'll manually enter that into our membership toolkit. Yeah. Um, but most, I would say like 90% of our memberships are through membership toolkit online and they pay through PayPal. Okay. So it's something similar to, to, to I've never heard of that one before, but that, yeah. okay. So this is, so you have your paper. Um, this is, PTA has an electronic membership method of joining and it is called TOTEM. I did see this, yeah. It's, is this pretty new? No, TOTEM's been oh. in operation about four years, five years. Okay. I just recently sent out an email to all of our units that were not on totem saying this is totem this is what it does if mm -hmm. you would like to check it out go to this link and you can do it so totem can take donations it can do memberships you can do multiple memberships it gives you an electronic membership card that's pretty cool it is um it sends them a message saying, thank you for joining. Uh, you can put that link on your Facebook page, which makes it super easy for people to join. It doesn't add anything to your unit's cost. Okay. Totem is paid, there, there is a $1 convenience fee that is paid by the person joining. 
Did I did I do that right? So you can find your you can you can have um, you can have it on Facebook. You can send out an email with the the link, um, and it, it's really easy. It actually has them sign up for um, renewal. You have to opt out of renewing for next year. Hmm. They send okay. you. They automatically send you a email saying your email is expiring, or mm -hmm. if you opt out, or if you're not opting out, they um, give you. Okay, so the flow of money. So, so with member tool, what membership? membership. It's called membership toolkit. Membership toolkit. Now, mm -hmm. do you still have to? shuffle off the two dollars and 25 cents that goes to national the two dollars that goes to state the 75 cents that goes to their district so this is where i this is where i don't know because i feel like the treasurer does all this uh-huh okay so i feel i just know that um all, all i know is the um the five dollar per member yeah okay but like the mechanics of that i don't know okay so with totem if they join using totem that money gets funneled automatically by totem to the appropriate uh, i see the I appropriate see. level and okay. then once a month your money is funneled into your bank otherwise you have to send to third district the money and third district will forward on nationals portion and states portion okay so that's what's currently happening then okay yeah so totem would save your treasurer a lot of work yeah so membership yeah. basics you have to remit the dues to maintain your good standing so to be a legal pta you have to have 15 members and a president a secretary and a treasurer mm -hmm. So you forward the portion of cap of, of the dues to third district if you're not using totem. Yep. And then you keep an accurate uh, membership list. Now with totem, it compiles the membership list for you. But if you have people who join using cash, you have the ability to go into totem and add their name to the membership list. Okay. That, yeah, and that's what I, cash or check. Yeah, that's what I currently do with our system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you do the, the membership list and you distribute membership cards. If you need membership cards, you can order them through our third district office. You can just do 916-228-2543. Um, I'm going to add that. Hold on. So that's, that's the phone number for the, the third district office. All right, hold on, let me add that in my phone. One second, context, add. So it's PTA. Yeah, third district office. I can also on the website. Third district. Yeah. And what was it again? It was 916. 916-228-2543. 2543, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the main line for any questions? Yes. That's the main line to say, hey, how do I do? And, and she'll get you to where you need to go. Perfect. And she will send you the um, membership cards for Carl Sundahl. So I think the president was telling me that she just received some of these. Like she got something in the mail, like a big packet of stuff. And she said there are a number of cards in there. I don't know if it's enough, but I'll find out. Yeah. yeah. We base what we send you on what last year's membership was. Got it. With a little bit like a 5% extra. If okay. you run out, just ask for more. Okay. 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 And so then we just manually, you just handwrite on those. You handwrite on them. Okay. Um, so there are um, awards and incentives and perks. Most of the perks are located in Southern California. Now, third district, we came up with some incentives for this year. And this is what they are. This will be posted, Bethany, on our website um, probably ne next week, the end of next week. So you don't have to memorize these. <laughs> so, 
So and what, um, yeah, what is the, so if I just like Google search third district PTA, California PTA. Oh, so no, our, uh, our website is three RD PTA dot com. Third PTA dot com. Uh huh. Third PTA dot com. Okay. Let's see. And these units have already used, these are units that are using Totem and they already have over 100 members. There are 15 schools that have done this in like a month. Nice. Okay. Yeah, very yeah, nice. I did see, a full, I saw some of our Folsom, uh -huh. you know, Theodore Judah, like a bunch of the Folsom schools are using Totem. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And so. Here are your resources. You can use the toolkit. You can sign up for something called Membership Monday. Um, it's on the CAPTA website. Okay. They have a they they send something out. They send out a little email newsletter type thing on Monday and say, "Hey, try this," or "This is this week's tip." And yeah. so, go ahead. So, um. The totem, totem is through CAPTA, right? Or totem is through CAPTA, yes. Okay. okay. National PTA has a lot of membership resources. It's a lot to go through, but um, excellent information there. And remember that you're not alone. I'm here to help. All you have to do is email me and I'll answer any questions I have. I'm just adding your info. So your okay, membership. Yeah. At, I um, wish you a lot of success. Thank you. This is really helpful. I think even just, just establishing communication with you so that as questions come up, you yeah. at least be able to point me in the right direction. Exactly. Yes, that's yeah. very helpful. Yes. Okay. Peggy or the membership chair. So yeah. where, and where are you guys located? So third district covers the counties of Calusa, El Dorado, Nevada, Placer, Sacramento, Sutter, and Yolo. We Holy cover cow, eight counties. Big, yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. We're mostly, uh, most of us are based in Sacramento. Okay. Nice. Wow. Oh, very good. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, Peggy, thank you so much for your time and for the great presentation and all the information. Oh, good. I'm glad that it helped. Let's absolutely. Absolutely did. Let's see. Can I stop recording now? <laughs> I think that does it. Yes.